Yo guys, 2022 has been a big year for Formula One. It's seen the introduction of brand new cars with completely new regulations. This means there was a complete change to how car setups work in F122. The cars in F122 are now heavier and have much fewer aerodynamic parts, meaning they drive quite differently. You'll notice a lot more understeer on corner entry and oversteer on corner exit. This is due to the front and rear wings being a lot less powerful in this year's game. And to coincide with this, Codemasters have tweaked the physics of this year's car to incorporate these changes. These changes have affected car setups in a pretty big way, and things that worked last year won't necessarily work this year. So with all of that said, I wanted to run you through the exact process I take when creating a new car setup. This process has been put together in a way which is the most efficient and it won't have you going back and retweaking certain setup options. If you follow this process step by step, you should not only create a relatively good car setup, but you'll also gain a nice in-depth knowledge of what setup options change certain parts of your car's handling. There is one golden rule that you should always abide by when creating a new car setup or updating a setup in F122, and that is to only change one thing at a time. If you start making multiple setup adjustments at once, you won't know which setup option affected your car when you do take to the track. Instead, put in a few bank laps on a specific tyre compound, then pit, make a single adjustment to one setup option, and then go back out on track to get a direct comparison. With this strategy, you'll know exactly what change has caused your car to handle differently. And from there, you can make a judgment call on whether to keep the adjustment or roll it back and try something else. You should also keep in mind your overall setup goal. Are you creating a setup that will be good in a race? Do you want a wet setup or even an ultimate one lap hot lap setup? By constantly working towards one singular goal, you'll have a more focused approach leading to a potentially better final setup. Now I know I did just say that you should never change more than one setup option at a time. However, when creating a brand new car setup, there are a few initial adjustments I always make before proceeding onwards. These adjustments are to the brake setup and the on throttle differential. I always set my brake bias to around 50 or 52% front and the brake pressure to 100%. This will almost always give you a good feeling on the brake pedal and you can always adjust these in the following steps if you fancy something a little different. Then I always knock the on throttle diff down to 65-70%. to 70%. By lowering the on throttle diff just a touch, you'll make your car ever so slightly easier to drive out of slower corners. Lower on throttle diff will help you find traction out of slow corners and will limit your excess wheel spin. These small adjustments will give your car which is ever so slightly easier and more comfortable to drive than the baseline setups are. From here, you can start adjusting setup options one at a time. With any car setup in F122, the first big part of the setup that I look at after my initial adjustments is the aero. Aerodynamics have seen a big adjustment in F122 compared to previous games. In older games, the aero had already been pre-adjusted from track to track, and that meant that having a front wing angle of 10 at Monza wasn't the same as having a front wing angle of 10 at Monaco. Instead, the aero setups were pre-adjusted to give a good baseline at the track you were at. Therefore, Monza aero levels were already much lower than Monaco aero levels in the older games. But in F122, that approach has seen a big change. Now, aero levels are equal at every track, meaning a front wing of 10 at one track is exactly the same as any other. To account for this, Codemasters have changed the setup options to now allow you to choose from 0 to 50 for both front and rear wings. This means that in F122, we have to rethink our aero setups. For some tracks that used to run low aero of around 2 or 3, they may now need to run an aero setup of 20 to 30. While this does mean we can't carry over specific car setups from F1 2021, it doesn't really change our approach too much. We still require lower levels of aero at high speed tracks and much higher aero at slower tracks such as Monaco and Hungary. The cars in F122 are quite different from those in previous games. They have much lower levels of downforce generated from the front and rear wings, and they have a tendency to both understeer and oversteer. This means that in F122, it isn't uncommon to run higher levels of aero than we normally would. It is also important to note that a lot of tracks in F122, you will require high levels of rear downforce compared to the front. I would typically start by making a couple of sweeping adjustments when changing my aero setup. Start by lowering the front aero a few points lower than the rear, and then adjust both front and rear wing angles together either up or down. Remember, faster tracks with fewer slow corners will require lower levels of aero, 
and slower tracks will normally require a higher aero setup. After making the, those initial adjustments, I'd then go out on track for a few laps and see how the car behaves. I'd normally stick to the same compounded tyre for all of my practice runs and I'd typically go for a medium tyre. This tyre will see more action during a race weekend, so it's probably best to prioritise this during a car setup. Always try to put in around 5 laps for each run and sometimes even more. This will allow your tyres to get up to the correct temperature and for you to get some consistent results and feedback. Note down how your car is handling during these initial laps. If it's understeering too much we can add some extra front wing, if it's oversteering too much we can reduce the front wing angle or add some extra rear wing. What you should be aiming for is for your aero to be as low as you can get away with before you start to lose too much lap time. The lower you set your aero the faster you'll be in a straight line and this will really aid with overtaking during the race. As you put in your lap times keep an eye on the times themselves. If you come into the pits and change your aero setup see if you're lapping slower or faster with the new setup. This will give you a good indication that you're heading in the right direction with your changes. A good aero balance should give you the best balance into and out of each corner. You should feel the car is near the edge of the downforce limit but never over it and you should have a decent comparable straight line speed to other cars. The AI in F122 can be incredibly fast in a straight line at some tracks so typically running slightly lower aero values is beneficial. While you're performing your final practice runs during this step, keep one eye on your tyre temps. Note these down as they'll be very important during our next step. You can do this by using your MFD, switching through the MFD pages until you see the tyre temperature page. After we have adjusted the aero and our initial changes, we should then look at the tyre pressures themselves. While there are still parts of the car setup that will affect the optimal tyre pressure that we should run, creating a solid baseline at this stage in the car setup process will aid with all other setup changes. Much like the aero, the tyres have also seen a significant change in F122. They're now much heavier due to the increased wheel size, and this makes them stiff over bumps and affects how quickly they heat up. If you did note down your tyre temperatures during the previous aero stage, we can start to make some tyre setup adjustments straight away. The goal with tyre pressures is to run them as high as we can without inducing too much wear, and wear is heavily linked to overheating. During any practice run, you should always look to keep your tyre temperatures under 100 degrees C. At this stage, you can check the tyre temperatures that you noted down in the previous step and adjust them accordingly. If you had an individual tyre temperature that went over 100 degrees C, reduce your tyre pressure. If the tyre temperature didn't get to at least 92 degrees at any point, increase the pressure. This is a good rule of thumb that allows you to adjust each tyre to find the ideal pressure setup. There are other reasons why we would increase or decrease tyre pressures and these can include a lack of traction when accelerating out of corners which would lead me to decrease the rear pressure somewhat. If your car is too stiff over bumps and that isn't solvable with the suspension setup you can reduce the tyre pressures all around and if the car is too sluggish when turning into a corner try to increase your front tyre pressures. After each adjustment you make head back out on track recheck your tyre temperatures across around 5 laps or so and they should ideally be better and more within the optimal tyre temperature range of 90 to 100 degrees. Keep adjusting the pressures up or down in the setup menu until you constantly hit these temperatures for all four tyres. The tyre pressures and suspension geometry are heavily linked, so we will revisit the tyre pressure setup after adjusting our suspension geometry, but this should give you a solid baseline to work from. So by now, we should have a car setup that allows us to drive consistent laps with the car feeling balanced the aero setup should be allowing us to carry good speed throughout the lap and our tyre pressures should be optimised. The next few steps will focus on the suspension and suspension geometry. These are possibly the trickiest parts of any car setup in F122 and adjustments here affect the car in a variety of ways. But we'll be aiming for good balance combined with great responsiveness and minimal excess tyre temperature. The first port of call is the camber and the toe. Both of these can be tricky to understand initially, but I'll try to do my best to explain them. The camber setup affects how far your tyres are leaning when looking from the front. More negative camber means the tops of the tyres lean further in towards each other. In F122, the further towards the left you set your camber, which means a higher negative number, the more your tyres will be leaning. The camber is useful for a couple of reasons. As you corner at high speed, your car leans on the outside tyres. The more negative camber you have, 
the more of the tire surface comes into contact with the track as you lean. This gives you more grip while cornering. However, higher amounts of camber will mean you have less of your tire in contact with the track when traveling in a straight line. This will cause excess and uneven tire wear. Higher amounts of camber result in more tire wear, but more grip when cornering at high speed. The setting your camber closer to the max setting, which is furthest right, will provide better tire wear during a race. At most tracks in F122, you'll typically want less camber, which is further right on the setup slider. This will result in better tire wear and create a more balanced setup. If during your practice laps, your tire temperatures remain under control, you can start to adjust your camber more towards the left, as this will add more camber, allowing you to carry some more speed through some corners. One quick note on the camber setup though, if you're struggling for rear traction, increasing your camber will only make this worse. More camber, further left on the slider, will reduce the contact patch with the track. This will reduce the amount of traction you have when accelerating from slower speeds. Next up we look at the toe. The toe setup affects the amount that your tires are pointing in or out when looking from the top. More toe will increase how much the front of the tires point out from your car, and this can increase overall responsiveness but will dramatically increase tire temperature. If your tires are pointing away from your car, you'll be introducing more drag to your car setup. This increases your tire temperature and reduces your top speed. I would always recommend reducing your toe setup close to its minimum value and then adjusting up from there. Additional toe will improve how willing your car is to turn, giving you better responsiveness. So if your car feels sluggish when you first turn the wheel, increasing your toe can help reduce this effect. Remember to keep an eye on your tire temperatures while making these setup changes. If your tires are getting too hot and regularly exceeding 100 degrees, you'll need to reduce your camber, toe or tire pressures. This is one of the most important balances to find in F122. Almost any change we make to the suspension geometry will affect our tire temperatures. So once you have a camber and toe setup that you feel works, Run another 5 lap test to check on your tyre temperatures. Make any final tweaks required to optimise your pressures before moving on to the next step. Your suspension setup is the final piece in our F122 car setup puzzle. Here we will address the overall balance of the car during cornering. The suspension setup is responsible for how much the car leans during cornering, how stiff the car feels over bumps and how low the car is to the ground, which affects both handling and top speed. The first part of your suspension setup that I look at is always the anti-roll bars. These are responsible for just how much the car leans during cornering. Stiff anti-roll bars will improve responsiveness and make the car feel light and agile, but this comes at the cost of overall stability. Increased anti-roll bar stiffness will make the rear of the car feel lively and can introduce oversteer to our setup. A softer anti-roll bar setup will make the car feel more sluggish but safer and easier to drive. Soft anti-roll bars will also improve your tire wear. As you can see already, anti-roll bars can be tricky to set up just right. The perfect balance should give you a car that's responsive, yet not too lively, as well as maintaining tire life throughout a whole long race stint. One of the quirks of car setups in F1 2021 was that the best anti-roll bar setups involved running extreme combinations. Often an extremely soft front ARB with an extremely stiff rear ARB produced the most drivable cars in F1 2021. And that approach hasn't really changed massively in F1 22. The suspension handling model has been changed dramatically though. 2022 Formula 1 cars were run much lower to the ground and this results in them having much stiffer suspensions. And Codemasters have reworked their entire suspension model to produce realistic results when changing the suspension and anti-roll bar setup. When approaching our anti-roll bar setup in F1 22, I'd recommend running the rear anti-roll bar softer than the front. This will give your car that's more responsive on your front end. I'd suggest that you start to increase your front and rear anti-roll bars together until your car starts to feel too twitchy and then lower them a little from that point. Keep one eye on your tire temperatures as well as stiffer ARBs will increase your tire temps. So to summarize, stiffer anti-roll bars will increase responsiveness but ARBs that are too stiff will make your car feel twitchy and hard to drive, and softer ARB setups will improve tire wear. Your ride height should be the next part of your suspension that you look at. In F122, cars are much lower to the ground than in previous years, and this has resulted in stiffer suspensions, but it also puts more emphasis on finding the right ride height. 
Lower ride heights will improve your overall downforce generated as well as increasing your top speed. However, set up your ride height too low and you may start to bottom out. Bottoming out is where the floor of your car hits the track surface. This is one of the consequences of porpoising that has been introduced into Formula 1 this year. But thankfully, the porpoising effect isn't in F122. However, you can still bottom out over bumps and curbs. If your car's floor hits the track surface, this will cause a temporary loss of grip. If this happens mid-corner, it can cause you to spin or lose control. The ideal ride height is one that is low to the ground as it can be without touching the track surface. Remember though, that as you ride over large curbs and bumps, your car's floor will get closer to the ground. So if you set up your ride height too low, it could cause instability over curbs. I'd recommend lowering your ride height both at the front and rear to start with and then perform a practice run. If you notice that your car is hitting the track, increase your ride height. Your suspension is the final part of our F122 car setup that we need to adjust. This will affect how stiff your car feels overall and how your car reacts to elevation changes such as bumps and curbs. Most tracks in F122 will require a softer suspension. This will improve your rideability over curbs, giving you a good balance as you attack corners. If your suspension is too stiff, your car will feel increasingly twitchy to drive. Perform a test run with the suspension at the default values before making any adjustments at all. If the car feels twitchy, then you should look at lowering your suspension setup or softening the car. If your balance feels good, you could look to increase it a little. Just like the anti-roll bars, currently the best approach for most tracks is a stiffer front suspension and softer rear. This allows the front of the car to be more responsive and understeer less, and it also helps the rear of the car stay planted to the road, helping with rear stability under acceleration. Much like your anti-roll bar setup, if your suspension is too stiff, this can cause excessive tire wear. And once we've looked at all of those parts of our car setup, now we need to test the setup and make any final tweaks or adjustments. Each part of the setup in F122 is heavily linked. This means that some of the changes you've made will have affected other parts of how your car behaves. It may be necessary to revisit some of the steps above to account for these changes. For example, stiffening the suspension could mean we can run less camber or toe, which in turn could improve overall tire wear. Pay attention to your lap times during these final test runs as well as your tyre temperatures. If your temperatures have become an issue and are exceeding 100 degrees, you should tone down some of your setup changes. Some of the things you could change to lower tyre temperatures, you could decrease your tyre pressure, decrease your on-throttle differential, soften your suspension, or remove toe and or camber. Each of these will introduce some negative traits, however it is important to find a balance in your car setup. Pick the option above that impacts your lap time and overall balance the least, and keep performing 5 lap tests until you feel you've achieved a good balance of fast lap time and good tyre wear. This will be the sweet spot for your car setup in F122. Don't be afraid to revisit any areas of this setup video to re-implement or adjust your approach. And once you've got a good setup that you're happy with, the next step is to take it out on track against the AI. See how fast your car is against them in a straight line and which parts of the track you're faster or slower. As I mentioned right at the beginning, try to prioritise a lower downforce setup, as this will allow you to compete for overtakes during the race and is generally the quickest way to set up your car. I will be looking at wet setups shortly as well as how to adjust any dry setup into a wet setup, so if you want to be notified when that video drops or any of my wet setups drop, hit the subscribe button and the alert bell. And if this video has been helpful, hit the like button and leave me a comment below how you feel you're getting on with car setups. But for now guys, I'll see you on track.